Hello, Freedom Fighters! You can do it! What have you got for us today, Chris? What's happening? A lot of idiots <laughs> said a lot of nonsense in the Guru Sphere, but they can't stop. They will not stop. Every week, they're out right here, are doing themselves. And there was a kind of Guru Con event. Mm. This is Brett Weinstein's Rescue the Republic. Wow. Holy moly. You know, sometimes the term grifter is overused, but in this case, it was a meeting of the biggest grifters, gurus, lots of polemical idiots, and also people that I had thought had gone from the discourse. The food babe showed up. Gatorade here in the United States uses red 40 and caramel color. In Germany, they use carrots and sweet potatoes to color their Gatorade. Vani Harry from skepticism in the 2000s, where she was, you know, decrying chemicals being in foods. And though she was on the Rescue the Republic event. So it's a really good illustration of the, the crunchy, conspiracist, right-wing populist crossover that the conspirituality folks and others mm. have been documenting. Think anti-vaxxers and MAGA chuds and grifter influencers and conspiracy mm. theorists just all blended together to a great big frothy <laughs> rhetorical yeah. milkshake disgusting but y you can't overestimate how seriously they take themselves like the the no. splash the splash screen on their thing and on their promotion stuff you've got russell brand and donald trump sitting at the head of the boat and, and brett weinstein is there in the middle looking and pierre corey and all the anti-vaxxers there they're all there in the boats rescuing the republic with Trump being the one who's there to do it, of course, because now this is the unholy alliance. RFK Jr. was one of the you know top billed speakers, right? And RFK Jr. is now on board the Trump train, helping them. And they've even got like a terrible new slogan. Instead of MAGA, it's MAHA, make America healthy again. Bit of a nod to the uh, anti-vaxxers there. It's all apparently a resistance against the conglomerate of industrial complexes. So it's the complexes that are the bad things, the military industrial complex, the medical industrial complex, the censorship industrial complex, immigration <laughs> industrial complex. It goes on. Oh, academic one as well. So yeah, you can see the sort of the sort of glue that binds it all together. The common thing is anti-institutional conspiratorial and it is an interesting indication of just the current state of i guess right-wing politics in the united states which is that it is conspiracy theories that bind it all together which puts it in our turf chris puts it within our ballywick i think yeah and i i mean the other sign that you see there they had like rob schneider used to be well, not not even used to be super famous, but like was at least a Hollywood figure uh, comedian. It's a bit like Kevin Sorbo, right? You know, ex Hercules is now a, a MAGA Republican or whatever. So you had figures like that, and you had Zuby, the anti woke rapper, and Tulsi Gabbard. It is the kind of people that you might see at the Republican convention <laughs> these days. You know, Hulk Hogan yeah. or whoever. Like a kind of weird clown collection of old actors and comedians and fringe politicians and anti-vaxxers and yeah an impressive collection of the greatest minds the world has to offer i feel playing a couple of clips from some of the speeches we can't get to them all because there simply is too many to cover but there are some highlights so first this is russell brand and jordan on stage and you're going to hear some crowd work or if they're terrifying you into fear of the future and using force and compulsion to regulate your obedience. And I would say, unless you want to be slave-like sheep who have no proper destiny to play, then find the divine invitation and forego the terror and force. Ladies and gentlemen, I happily concede this unofficial debate rap battle to the great Jordan Peterson.
Now, I know you've got some fantastic speakers coming up. I can see Jimmy Dore down there. I've had a magnificent conversation with Jimmy. And above all else, when I speak to Jimmy Dore, he impresses upon me the necessity for unity, the necessity to remain vigilant, the opportunity to find alliance between one another, to focus on the issues, health, ending war, free speech, not personalities. And if I have your permission, I would like to end in a short prayer on this holy and auspicious day. You got a bit of ranting, a bit of word salad from Jordan Peterson at the beginning. Then you got Russell Brand playing Master of Ceremonies. Yeah, shiny night. I see Jimmy Dore back there. That's Jimmy. <laughs> so it's a great thing. <laughs> and then <laughs> high-minded ideals, Matt. The most high-minded. Ending wars, peace, health, yep. love. Health. Who could be against these things? You can see there, though, in his few lines that there's like a it, there's just a small shift required of Russell Brand to go from his previous version of conspiratorial mm-hmm. word salad, anti left wing revolutionary, le- left wing revolutionary to this kind of right wing <laughs> coded. So you know, I'm just saying, just saying. You heard him tee up a prayer, Matt. Now, <clears throat> of course, good Christians and whatnot will know that the Bible has various injunctions about being performative with your religiosity. And, you know, Russell said, it's not about personalities. It's not about not making a show of things, right? Jordan Peterson on stage with him. Yes, he's shouting out him, you know, saying, oh, big up Jordan and whatnot. Yes, Jordan is in a two-faced suit, right, with his, like, red and blue thing, and they're strutting around the stage. But it's not like they're both going to kneel down on the stage and performatively engage in a prayer, is it? Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, I call upon your name on this occasion. May it augment an era of peace. May we reach out our hands in friendship, in particular to those that we might imagine we would oppose. May these institutions that were once regarded sacred, so sacred in fact that any incursion upon them as on January 6th was regarded as a kind of heresy. May the values that warrant these buildings, these institutions, that flag this nation, being regarded as one nation under God, return to the forefront. May I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, in your holy name, that all Americans of all cultures and colors and persuasions come together in your name. I ask Heavenly Father for for a new era of peace, that Satan be cast out in your name in all his forms, but in particular in the bizarre Kafka-esque, Huxley-esque, late Orwellian form of totalitarianism, bureaucracy in the name of care. Lord, I ask for true republicanism and true democracy, that every individual may feel their freedom, their freedom to open-heartedly engage in discourse and conversation with one another in good faith and enter the deception, the lies and the censorship and the control. Respect the honour of the individual, the sovereignty of the individual, that we are all fallen individuals and that we may serve in your name. Yeah, yeah, that's quite a prayer. The cast on the stage there, it does look like a collection of Batman villains, doesn't it? You've got, you've got the Two-Face Joker type sure, thing, man. and then you've got the, like, the Lothario. <laughs> and yeah. and yeah. meanwhile, you've got the crowd kind of milling around there who look like characters from a Far Side cartoon. <laughs> Just like quite accurate. Quite accurate. I've not heard that many prayers before, Matt, that reference January 6th, Kafka, and true republicanism during, you know, the exhortation towards the Lord. That's a unique kind of prayer style that he's invented in his short time as a Christian, almost yeah. as if it's not really about the right. religion and it's a little bit more about, you know, playing up to a certain religious audience. Uh, one yeah. could cynically suggest that, no? January yes. 6th. Getting the shout out as well. Yeah, that's mm. right. Clearly he sees um, prayer as just simply like an empty receptacle for him to do his normal spiel. Yes, and we should also mention that there was a tweet put out by Russell Brand. He said, it might seem a bit soon to be baptizing people, but the apostles did it on day one. So here we are. And he included two pictures of him doing an adult baptism with himself and the Miller man, both in their underwear, him in his tidy whities the other black boxers, baptizing someone who looks like he's wearing a Star Trek uniform. <laughs> if you wanted to baptize someone while in your underwear, sure, maybe there's a reason to do that, but when you're posting it on Twitter, 
there is something of a performative element that seems hard to ignore. Yeah, well, it gives him a chance to show off his um, rather svelte body. I think that had something to do with it. So, yeah, and Jordan, you know, just to say Jordan as well, famously conflicted about his religious things, but kneeling down beside Russell on stage with his eyes closed, looking deep in in the mood there. So, yeah. He's on board. He's on board, yes. So that was... Russell and Brand and Jordan Peterson's prayer time. Let's hear next from one of the key figures. So this is, I think, one of Brett's crowning moments. And of course, the man was there himself. Please welcome the sexiest biologist alive, (laughs) Brett Weinstein! But, you know, Brett can be a little bit highfalutin for these kind of events. So let's hear him set the groundwork for a line that he's going to deliver that will electrify the audience. Here we go. The most important things we pass between generations are myths, stories that are so powerfully important, they are encoded in a special sacred layer. And in our case, the myth we need comes to us from the Greeks, the founders of the ancient West, the one from which the modern West ultimately emerged. It is the story of the phoenix, a mystical bird that instead of making chicks, lights its nest ablaze and raises anew from the ashes. Watching the modern West burn, I believe it is no accident that this story points us to a hidden solution, a remedy for which we just so happen to have the ingredients. One of our explicit purposes in this gathering was to galvanize the unity movement, bringing representatives together from across the global West. And if you will allow me to draw on another myth, I believe our mission will become clear. I call the thing that has captured our system Goliath. It is the force that prevents all meaningful change. In the biblical story, Goliath is a giant, a man, a large man, but a man all the same. In our time, Goliath, like everything else, has scaled way up. The force that wants us to be terrified to exercise our First Amendment rights in our own capital, that's Goliath. Now look around you. Do you all see what I see? David has scaled up. We are David. We are mighty and our time has come. There you had the myth of the phoenix introduced and Brett likes this David Goliath story. And he did get an applause line. But that isn't the applause line I want to highlight. But what did you think of that, Matt? Did that work for you? Uh, (laughs) I don't think I'm the target audience. All the clips I've heard from this event, including the ones you've played, Chris, I didn't hear much specifics. Like, it's it's a lot of rhetoric, right? Oh, it's a lot of rhetoric, yeah. A lot of rhetoric, but... A little bit weak on specifics. I wonder, did, did you hear other stuff that was more specific, like actual specific things, or was it all like that? No, it depends what you mean. Like, I mean, the food babe had very specific chemicals she was upset about <laughs> and yes. it was holding up like packets of crisps. And This one has an ingredient called dimethyl polysiloxane. So that's quite specific. <laughs> so we've set the groundwork map. We've got the myths laid out. you got the phoenix, yep. an important, yep. uh, mm-hmm. you know, image. The West is burning, Chris. The West is burning. Now let's see if Brett can inspire them at the end of his speech. You know, if he can get a line that they can get behind. What's he got up his sleeve? Now let's put the two myths together. Goliath made a terrible strategic error. He is ungodly powerful, but he's dumb as a box of rocks. His error was this. He terrorized all the competent, courageous people and set about driving them from the institutions. Now they gather in a post-political unity movement and come to know their power. We have every single person you could possibly want on our side. We have all the courage, all the integrity, and all the know-how. The question is how to drive Goliath out and infuse all that talent and insight back into the system so it can be renewed. 
In 1787, Ben Franklin was asked if the Constitutional Convention had produced a monarchy or a republic, and Franklin famously replied, a republic if you can keep it. Today, David and the Unity Movement face a similar question. What we must deliver is a republic if we can phoenix it. <laughs> Did you get the line there, Matt? <laughs> yeah. Was it a republic if you could phoenix it? If we could phoenix it. Yeah. To be fair, he moved on fairly quickly after. <laughs> it was a little bit of a confused. <laughs> yeah. That's just very typical Brett thinking there's this cool line that he's going to, you know, be like Franklin. You know, yeah, this this yeah. kind of quotable line that everybody knows. And it doesn't really work. And one, it's not <laughs> grammatically correct. It doesn't work grammatically. Yeah. And it's just so incredibly labored, isn't it? It's you take these two, you know, metaphors, these two legends and mush them together. So they're gonna phoenix it. They're gonna phoenix it. They're gonna build a republic again from the ashes, because it's all burning, it's all totally corrupt. All of the good people, all of the people with integrity, the people with courage. The people with ability are up there on stage. <laughs> people like him and Jordan that have been driven out of the institutions and they want back in. Let me in. <laughs> yeah, I had this image of we've got all the people here. We've got Bubbles the Clown, Giggles the Wiggles. The winner, we, got the, the we got the Joker. We have Please Lothario. <laughs> yeah. Please welcome our good friends and freedom fighters, Skillet. It's amazing to see like the reality juxtaposed with what they are in their own mind. Yeah. The incredible self-importance of it just comes through all the time, isn't it? When it's it's just the contrast oh. between what you're seeing and hearing, which is a clown car, versus <laughs> just how, how incredibly seriously they take themselves. It's beautiful. Well, plus Brett online. Like you can never you can never do justice to the level of self-aggrandizement that Brett will display because he described how this event was going to be like the fulfillment of Woodstock, like very much part two to Woodstock with the same cultural impact uh, of Woodstock. It does not have the Woodstock vibe. I mean, from the shots I saw of the credit, like it, I'm not sure where it was held, but it just looked from the images a bit like a parking lot. Like it's, it's a pretty nondescript area of tarmac and there's a bunch of far side people standing around in their shorts and t-shirts kind of staring goggle-eyed blankly at things it does not have the woodstock vibe i mean woodstock had a whole bunch of the leading musicians of the 60s but in comparison you've got zuby okay dude <laughs> yo yo Oh, you don't like my style? Okay, dude. Oh, you don't like my lyrics? Okay, dude. Shout out to Joe Rogan. I guess you've got Russell Brand. He was in films. And Matt, like, Brett was on Twitter warbling about, you know, Elon and how he's now decided that this, the valuations of Twitter that came out that presented as having lost all this money, that, like, that's wrong, right? And he, he understands nothing about economics, but he's sure it's all, like, a conspiracy you know, the try and damage Musk. But at the end of it, he says, anyone who spoke or attended the Rescue the Republic rally in Washington, D.C. on Sunday and then read the Wall Street Journal's preposterous article about it knows that this tactic is in the air in the run-up to the U.S. presidential election. The news is not the news. The analysis is not the analysis. The science is not the science. The value is not the value. We're living in Plato's cave. Follow the white rabbit. <laughs> he's immune to cringe and he thinks he's so profound plato's cave just a note again getting abused there poor plato's cave you can't go within 100 <laughs> meters of that cave without it being misrepresented anyway that's what he was up to i'm not done though matt this isn't as bad perhaps as on the nose as the other ones but just to give a bit more vibe of the carnivalesque atmosphere that was there here's matt Taibbi being introduced, I think it's by Lara Logan. And Matt Taibbi has a voice that reaches beyond the feedback loop. It breaks through the information dominance, and it's very, very important. So I want to ask him to come out on stage. Where is he? Where is Matt? Matt Taibbi, we need you. Did you enjoy the, 
the other holy <laughs> yell that was reaching at it. Yeah, I imagine Matt Taibbi doesn't usually experience that kind of... <laughs> And Taibi as well, like, yes, he's gone down this road of being, you know, a conspiracy prone, populist leaning kind of guy, self aggrandizing, but his cadence and delivery is still very much that of a bit of a wonky journalist, slightly awkward guy, right? But he's here, Matt, he's on the stage and he did give a a speech that was well received, but I, I just want to point out another instance that you might regard as pandering. And unlike the busy bodies of the internet age to whom words are just another overproduced, over plentiful, unnecessary and vaguely hazardous commodity like greenhouse gases or plastic soda bottles, people like Madison understood the value of language. In 1787, you might have to walk a mile or five just to see a printed word. And it was probably the Bible. Now I'm not religious, but I've read the Bible And of course, so did they. They knew the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God, and the Word, I'm sorry, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And this was a reference to Genesis. In the beginning, God said, let there be light, and the world was born. So for them, the Word was infused with the power of creation itself. It wasn't a small thing. This wasn't just law. This was metaphysics. This was cosmogony. We were a little country of, run by a bunch of jumped up tobacconists and corn farmers who needed an ally to withstand the wrath of European royalty. And we got it by lighting a match under human ingenuity and creativity and passion. Just I find that that he would move into essentially like a Jordan Peterson-esque reference to biblical stories and their importance and just a little on the nose Matt with this particular crowd well I'm noticing again that it's all very vague like big on metaphor big on sweeping statements and um, rhetoric but yeah very light on details right seems to be the common Mm. theme well so that was what Brett and friends were up to RFK Jr also gave speeches you can imagine right you get the idea Tulsi Gabbard, what's she going to be saying? Same thing. And they're all talking about how we need to unite. We need to, you know, restore freedom, all these kind of things. And how are we going to do it? (laughs) Well, uh, there is one figure who's known for really respecting democracy and the rule of law, and that is candidate Donald Trump. So there we go. That's what we got to do. 